if we're being honest, they are women who are mean and not nice. Mm-hmm. And they they nice in your face, mm-hmm. and then they go behind your back and they talk about you, mm-hmm. and they don't think it'll come back to you, mm-hmm. but it does. And you hear about it, and what do you do? Are you the kind of person who, if you meet a woman that is mean and says mean things about you behind your back, do you confront the situation, or are you like? MVP and with me the ever so amazing Mia Brown and we're here because we want to have conversations with each other in front of you because these are the conversations we feel need to be seen yeah and heard 100% and our shows are so far apart we never get to sit down and have these chats although we do chat on the phone sometimes yes for hours actually yeah and then we cry to each other I'm so single yeah why are men like we are so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but this is about you women out there we want to have conversations we always have with each other but we never have in public yeah and I think it's because we are I don't want to say embarrassed, but we choose not to want to either humiliate or hurt each other's feelings Mm -hmm. as women. But these are conversations we actually need to start having from ourselves about each other towards each other. Absolutely. And I think if we have these conversations openly and honestly, we can then start to be better towards one another. Mm. So, yeah, this is this is going to be great. Welcome to That's on Womanhood. Today's episode is all about types of women. And if you think types of women, it always takes me back to high school. And I say high school is because when you get to high school, you have a bit more freedom in understanding what type of person you are or who you want to hang out with. And a lot of the times I didn't belong to a clique. I wasn't part of it. But I remember a clique that was in my school and let's call them the gorgeous squad. Okay. They were all about always being together, whether at school, in class, during break time. And I was neither here or there with being part of cliques, but I sometimes felt a bit left out. Mm. And I think the type of woman that I was back then was very, um, very loner type of woman. Like yeah. I just came to do school. I came to do drama, you know, be brilliant at school, make my family proud. And that was it. Mm. To say I wanted to have friends around me didn't really happen. So the type of woman I was back at school was a loner. How about you? I was um, a loner as well mm. for uh, a very large part of my, especially in high school. There was a group of friends, the gorgeous girls, because every school had a gorgeous girls click, right? Yeah. Um, they bullied me quite heavily. Um, so I left there. I went to therapy, tried to figure everything out. And then I met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the bullying got very bad. They made me feel so self-conscious and um, bad about myself and unwanted and unseen. Um, so at a very young age, my mom suggested that I go and work through it with a mm. the therapist. And then when I got to grade 11, I met a big group of girls and they were lovely. They yes. really, really were amazing. Um, Yeah, we shared a lot. We had sleepovers. We had fun. I felt like I'd finally found a group of friends that accepted me just the way that I was, um, were keen to get to know me and understand me and hang out with me. Mm -hmm. And at that age, that's all you really want, right? You just want that acceptance from people. So I got that from these girls. Shout out to you girls. Thank you so much. We (laughs) parted because we went to varsity. But when I was younger, I think I was the kind of woman or young girl who was still trying to figure herself out um, who really was trying to build some confidence build some trust in people build some trust in women as well other young girls as well Um, and it was a lot of figuring out at the time and I think I was the kind of woman who allowed myself to figure it out I think especially after going to therapy my therapist taught me that There are some things that you can take accountability for, but there are other things that you need to accept are other people's fault. And you cannot take that on and continue the rest of your life with it. So it was working through those things. It was accepting myself for who I was, or at least, you know, trying to at the time. Yeah. And now that you've grown up, do you still think you're a loner? I'm a loner now. Um, I went from having like a big group of friends to being a loner. Um... At this point, if I'm being completely honest, I don't, I think I've got two friends left and that's about it. Two friends friends and my sister. Yeah, Mm. female friends. 
two friends and my sister um, and my mom, who I would consider my friend as well. But I think that that's okay. Yes, um, yes. I think as you get older, you realize that people come into your life mm. and then eventually, you know, they serve whatever purpose they have and then they leave. And sure. that's the same thing I wanted to ask you. You were a learner when you were younger. Is that the case still? I've always been a loner and I think I've always been okay with being a loner. I think when I was at school and remembering the friendship groups that existed, I didn't feel like I was left out. Mm. I felt like my job here is to just come on top, like be number one in class, be impressive yeah. with my marks and just impress my family because I don't think we were introduced to friendship or the culture of friendship at home. Mm -hmm. I mean, at home you have your siblings and that's a different kind of relationship than you have with friends. Mm -hmm. And also my mom always used to be so aggravated about friends and mm -hmm. she was a loner when she was young but also she was the only child so she always used to say I'm on gun. yeah and every time she said it like that I was like okay cool that's not something we're even going to think about it's wasting our time let's just keep moving and I think that's just been my trajectory every time I've been evolving from high school to varsity and varsity as well I mean and I come from a really cool varsity I went to Tax of Next oh um, yeah University of Pretoria and I would hang out with the friends that I would be introduced to but maybe for 10 minutes and then I'd leave because I know it's just not my thing to mm. be around people to have a group of people around me even like my friends now when they're with their friends I always choose to just hang out for an hour and then I go home because I, I can't do it physically I can't be there with people and if someone jokes with me or insults me in a joking manner I don't like it I leave immediately mm. so I know that I'm a stand strong loner and I'm also okay with it. Mm -hmm. I just feel like maybe it also might impact my relationship um, intimately. Yeah. And I think that's also why now I'm trying to understand why I feel like I need to distance myself from people ever mm -hmm. so often. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's something I also need to speak to a therapist about. About, 100%. Yeah. So your mom is one woman that you've experienced. Mm -hmm. Have you experienced other women that have given you different perspectives on friendship? and on women um, in general. I mean, you you do have a couple of female friends mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, what was it like kind of engaging with those women, those women who are completely different from your mom, who's like, no friends, mm -hmm. focus on work. And then you've got these, you know, female friends who are like, I and I like your vibe, mm -hmm. you know, let's get to know each other. Mm -hmm. um, what was that switch like for you? I think for me, it was, a, it was more of, we're not trying to be cool outside with people and we're not trying to go to places but it's more of a I want to be your support system mm -hmm. I want to support you because I also came from a space where at a young age I had to be a breadwinner so now I wasn't dealing with um, friends that wanted to go out often or try this or try that it was more of a let's hang inside and maybe cook something together mm -hmm. or let's just watch movies mm -hmm. then I was like okay no some people are really approaching me in a very I'm just there to hang out with you man there's nothing that I'm trying to get from you or gain from you I just want to know you as a person mm -hmm. that for me was weird because it was like huh someone actually is interested in me and it started when I started um just being in the streets so the way I met Nadia was when I had done my first weekend show remember when you were on breakfast yes. and I was on lunch yes. I was all being at back to the city and that's when I oh, first, wow. first met Nadia back yeah. in 20 2014 15 where well, that's when we started now mm -hmm. and that's when we just decided to be friends because I was like oh she's tall she's tall too and wow. we started having a chat about being tall and all of a sudden I was like I like this girl oh, that's so cool. and that's how we became friends and I think 10 years later we're still like homies because yeah. also she wasn't trying to you know make me her entourage or mm. make me something that's like because she's like a queen bee Nadia is a queen bee yes. but she didn't try and make me anything part of her team she was like when we're here together we're here together mm. and when we're chilling together we get to touch base with each other on things that really matter to us so my close lady friends are usually people I have deep conversations with mm. like yo dude we've been like in single for years like maybe we should start thinking about options yeah <laughs> and that's because we're getting to that age yeah. we're getting so yeah. moody so that's the support that i built with the lady friends that i have not yeah. to get ready with me and she's very different from me i mean i'm not the outfit and because and, she handles that yeah she does oh she does Whoa. But she accepts me for me. And I think that's what I've been looking for. And all the other friends that I have that are ladies in my group are not people that are obnoxious or arrogant. They're just very decent women. And they're all different types. 
But when we come together, our types complement each other. And that's what friendship is all about. Yes. And I love the fact that you mentioned that Nadia is a queen bee, yes. but she's not a mean person. Yes. So you can you can be a queen and get into a room and stand your ground, mm. but you can be nice about it. You can be kind. You can walk in and greet. Mm. So you can take up space without offending others and making other people feel small. Mm. The reality though, Ayanda, is... In the different kinds of women that we experience, women like your mom who are loners, women mm. like Nadia who walk into a room and command a space, women like yourself who do the same thing. There are, if we're being honest, there are women who are mean and not nice. Mm -hmm. And they, they're they nice in your face mm -hmm. and then they go behind your back and they talk about you mm -hmm. and they don't think it'll come back to you, mm -hmm. but it does. And you hear about it and what do you do? Are you the kind of person who, if you meet a woman that is mean and says mean things about you behind your back, do you confront the situation or are you like, no, I don't like confrontation. I don't like conflict. Because Me too. It's just, it's too much. And mm. I'm, I'm hurt. I'm coming from a hurt space. I'm like, you said? You think yeah. I'm like that? Yeah. And it hurts me a lot. So I really usually just distance myself because it's like, there's nothing I can do here. I'm not going to waste my time convincing you um, of my worth to you. I don't know why I'd even bother doing mm. that. But hey, something sounds familiar in what I just said now. Yeah. In terms of also relationships as well. But for women like that, I never really pay mind to them. It's the ones that actually say to your face mm. that really for me are just out of this world it, it just amazes me how someone can be so cruel to you and also want to destroy opportunities for and you. oftentimes they don't even know who you they yeah. don't know who you are i mean you gig all the time yeah. i'm pretty sure you've had interactions with women when you're out and you're gigging oh yeah well you know try to impose themselves oh yeah on you and oh, they yeah. look at you like this and, and they're busy oh. with their happily pipe there yeah they don't oh. want to cheat for you in the couch even though it's <laughs> a session <laughs> guys it's the most ridiculous thing like it's so funny to me when that happens but i also do sit and wonder if there are moments where i have done that knowingly or unknowingly and have made other women feel uncomfortable are there moments where i took i said something or i looked at a woman a kind of way um to you know minimize her that made her feel small that mm. took away her confidence and i'm pretty sure i have intentionally or unintentionally i won't lie to you there are moments when i've been a bit of a b-word mm -hmm. i have because there are moments where I felt like I needed to defend myself. Mm. There are moments where I have spoken crap about people, mm. about women specifically, mm. because I don't like them because of one, two, three, four, five. Mm. And I think growing older makes you realize that in those moments, you try to justify your actions. Mm. No, I spoke crap about her because of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm. But at the end of the day, you were just having a bad heart, mm. sending bad vibes to someone that probably did not deserve it. Mm. But that's what that's what introspection does and that's what therapy does, right? It is also about holding yourself accountable mm. and holding others accountable as well. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, it comes back to understanding, mm. right? Trying to understand other women and how they relate to you. The way you understand women in your 20s, we can go as far back. The way you understand women in your teens, in your 20s, in your 30s is completely different. True. Because you understand yourself a lot better the older you get. Absolutely. So then you know, this is not the kind of woman that I want in my space. Mm -hmm. She can do her thing. Mm -hmm. Good on you, girl. Do you. But I, mm -hmm. I don't mess with that. What happens if your friends or the people that you choose to be around you don't act like that towards you, but they do that towards someone else. Damn, why would you ask why me that? Me <laughs> why would you ask me that? Um, I've had moments where I would entertain that kind of behavior. Mm. If one of my friends comes to me and starts gossiping about someone else, mm. I've entertained it. Mm. And I will also add my two sentences. Yeah. And then she, and then she even, and then, and then, you know what I, I've also noticed about like gossip sessions, like mean gossip sessions like that, is that you will find fault with, with a woman for absolutely no reason. Mm. Yeah. And then even the way she walks and she is just <laughs> like... <laughs> Even the way she walks, she can't even walk straight. Did you see her? Your dude. And then she was wearing... Blah, blah, blah. 
You know, and it makes no sense. It's got nothing to do with the situation. Yeah. But you try to find, you know, things to add, two cents to add that make no sense, but you're fueling this kind of conversation. Mm. So yes, I'm guilty of it. There are moments where even when my friend is being completely horrible, I will entertain them because they are my friend. Mm. Um, but again, growing up is realizing that there's no need for that. And um, the energy you put out is the energy you get back. True. So the more you talk crap about people and the more you, you know, say all of these horrible things about them, it comes back to you eventually. Um, and the way that karma works also is it will get back to that person. Yeah. And then what happens when they come? What if they are a confrontational person and they say, and Ayanda, I heard you said one, two, three, four, five about me. What do you do then? Most likely, if someone has said something bad about you behind your back, and you confront them, they won't react the same way that they did when they were in that gossip session mm, with that friend. True. So it really is up to you to, oh, this is my favorite saying, protect your peace. Yes. There are some women that will be for you and that will support you. And there are some women that will not. The decision lies with you. Do you mm. keep them around or do you get rid of them? Mm. It's crazy. It is. And weird. Now, out of all of that, I think we have defined different types of women mm. and women that we've seen growing up and women that we are witnessing at the present moment. But I think if we can define the three types of women that should be existing consistently right now in this day and age, mm -hmm. I would say the Queen Bee, but not the Queen Bee that we know to be in the main character movies like Mean Girls. Yes, not that exactly. Queen Bee, yeah. Like the Nadia and Akai Queen Bee. Mm -hmm. And then what other type of woman would you say? The loner is also still cool. I think the loner is cool. Yeah. But the loner needs to know to not be so alone. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? But I also think that the loner is cool. But as women, we need to start creating spaces for the loner to feel comfortable enough to come, like you were saying, to come into and then to retreat as mm -hmm. soon as they start to feel overwhelmed. Um, we also need um, the, I mean, there's, there's different kinds of personalities when we think about women, right? You've got a type A personality True. who's taking care of everyone all the time. Mm. Do you need a tissue? Do you need a tampon? Are you okay? Are you okay? You've got the type B that's just kind of like flimsy and they mm -hmm. kind of go wherever life takes us. Guys, let's take a road trip next weekend. Why not? Yeah. Um, but the different these different types of women are women that, like you were saying earlier, on complement each other, mm -hmm. right? Um, at the end of the day, the main kind of women that we need is women that support each other even when no one is looking. Mm -hmm. So even when you are by yourself in your room, what kind of things are you saying about other women? Mm -hmm. um, because what you realize is when you are there at life and you've had all of the Captain Morgans in the world, then you start, right? All of that foulness comes out mm -hmm. in those moments. So start here. Relax, speak positively about others. Mm. And then that's that's the kind of energy that you project. That's good. Speaking of life, so Nia was very drunk and it was like raining like cats and dogs. No, what and then she randomly what is the story? walked into um, the bus I was using because I was gigging. And she's like, I don't know whose bus this is. Ah! <laughs> I forgot about that. I'm like, hey, Nia. She's like, hey, I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm like, girl, it's fine. You also need those type of homegirls that you know, when your oh big is about to go left, you have a homie in everyone. And it's also because of the person that you are to other people. Yes. So if Nia was actually a mean person, I would have said, yeah, she can stay outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lock the dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I, yeah. she she walked in because I was like, yo, it's raining. And yeah. let her in, let her in. So my, whatchamacallit, road manager yeah. opened for you and she came in and then we were having a fat chat. And then I don't know, you eventually found who you were looking for. No, Nasty C was on. Oh, so I went yeah. to go, I went to go yeah, watch yeah, Nasty yeah, C, the yeah. rain. I'm his biggest fan, so I went to go, yeah. But that's the type of woman I always want to be. And mm. I always want to make sure I stay consistently with you. Like, I want to care for you even though we might not speak often or know each other a lot. It's just like, yo, man, that's a girl I know. I I think highly of her. I respect her a lot. I also want to protect her. Yeah. And that's the type of woman I think we all need to aim to. Mm, mm. Just and the reality is, again, not every woman is like that. So be very careful about who you decide 
um, to be kind to in that way mm -hmm. um, because there are a lot of women who will take, take, take but never give and mm -hmm. there will come a time where you need something from them you need that kind of support you need them to open the door to the van mm -hmm. and they won't mm -hmm. um, but that's just the reality of life mm -hmm. some women are great most women are really fantastic but some of them suck I didn't want to add on to that. There was another word I could use. For it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta be but polite. I think we're not swearing on this one. No, we? we're not. We're not. Because then they're still going to bleep it out anyway. Yeah. I'm just joking. <laughs> I think that's, that's the other thing is, first of all, protect your peace. Mm -hmm. And this is also something that we need to start teaching young girls from a very, very young age to be like, um, things are not always going to go the way that you want other women other young girls are not going to react the way that you want mm. and that is okay yeah. that is okay what you need to do is accept and move on there are many ways in my childhood um that that was kind of shown to me there are many heroes that i grew up watching who instilled that those kinds of um values in me outside of my mother and my aunt i mean i come from a very big family of women um but for me, when I think about my childhood, when I think about lessons that I learned from women outside of my family, I think about Elle Woods from Legally Blonde, the movie. I, I remember watching that movie for the first time and thinking, oh my goodness, who is this powerhouse of a girl? Yes. She's the blonde girl that everyone thinks is super ditzy and not smart. And she ends up going to college because she's trying to get her boyfriend back. But she ends up being such a success and she ends up realizing her power. She ends up realizing how smart she actually is. Mm. Um, she ends up realizing that the perception that other people had of her is not the perception she should have of herself. Mm. Elle Woods, also she looked really cute in like all of those pink outfits. So for me, as a young girl, that was my hero. Obviously that's changed mm. now. Um, but as a young girl, that was the, the, the one figure that I looked up to on TV at least, um, that taught me a lot about confidence, self-confidence, um, self-actualization and realization and self-appreciation mm. as well. Do you, do, you, do you know Elwoods? Yes, I know. I feel like you're nodding, but you're like, ah, oh, bend and snap. Yay! That's all I can say. But that was a really good movie. It was also very inspiring. Uh, I drew from real life because we weren't allowed much TV time back in the day when really? we were younger. Yeah, we had to like read books and stuff. And that's how I got into Harry Potter and reading all the Harry Potter novels before. Oh, hectic. That's so surprising that you're like a TV personality, yeah, no. radio personality <laughs> now. No, it was that's like so crazy. Yeah. But, uh, for me, I think it has to be my cousin. My cousin was the first from our family to move to Joburg from KZN. She mm -hmm. did really well back in school. And she moved to Joburg to case um, to Joburg to our family so she could sign up and register for varsity. She decided to go to Vitz. So my dad was also proud because it was my dad's sister's oh. daughter. So he was going traveling to Vitz every day to help her register, pay registration, help move her in. And she elevated so beautifully because maybe three years later now she had got her first car and she was working and she had a job. So I was just very inspired by how she just kept moving. And also I think I took from her elements of a type of woman who I took from her the independency of being a woman because when I used to go and sleep over at her place when I, I'd spend the weekend with her it was her own space she was mm. living alone she was in her own car she had her own things I'm like oh my goodness everything is yours here so cool. like you own all of this like yeah. there's no mom or dad coming out of the main bedroom this is you so that's when I actually first realized that women can't be independent outside the family setup and I was like you are my one to look mm. up to and if I ever had problems or I was going through a lot I'd just call her and speak to her and now I'm pretty Pretty much also that for her. I'm her younger sister, but I'm taking her kids to school. You know when you have the sticker for those Aww, schools, the yeah. private schools? I got a sticker too. Yeah, you know, me too. It means a lot. Yeah. But I think for her, for me, she is my my hero when I was growing up. Because mm -hmm. I was just like, wow, you're so brilliant. And she's done so, Oh, amazing. So she was uh, legally, <laughs> <laughs> legally, you know, independent. But that was, that. that was for me person that I still look up to to this day. Yeah. yeah. There's so many more to come. This is only episode one and truth be told, it's only the beginning of fun conversations. Hashtag that's on womanhood. I forgot it. So you said yeah, yeah. so okay, I had to remember it in my head. Okay. okay, cool. Hashtag that's, that's on womanhood. womanhood.